I am now going to introduce Bonnie Buckaroo. She's from Lansing Online News, and she is a teacher at, at MSU. Greetings to everybody. Before the storm rolls in, I'll try to get this in. I'm just here really to speak from my heart today because uh, when they sent me the uh, information about the rally and they were talking about how they wanted to make sure that we all came and, and showed up and had signs that were appropriate for you and our mothers to see, I thought about my mother and I thought about my grandmothers and I thought about all of the personal things that have happened to the women in my family and how much they illustrate what has really happened to women in this country. I think the first thing we need to realize is that we have to stop being good girls. We have to, we have been raised to be polite, to be sweet, to think that it's a meritocracy. And if we just do things nicely and ask for things that maybe they will be given to us. Rights are something that in this country you literally have to fight for. Yeah! The right to vote occurred in Australia and New Zealand in 1893. We didn't get it here till 1920. And the women who did that literally put their lives on the line. They were imprisoned, they were beaten, they were force-fed, as you will see in those that wonderful HBO movie about that topic. Women have always had to fight for their rights here, but I didn't realize how hard we were gonna have to fight now. I think about my grandmothers. They came over from Lithuania, and one was the daughter of the mayor, and the other one was the daughter of a man who worked in the fields, who was a peasant. But America, the great melting pot, equalized them when they got here. They were both people who had no power. They were married to alcoholic husbands. They wanted a divorce. They found it very difficult to get one. They couldn't get away from the abuse without a divorce. This was an era when women really were chattel. And it's a time that they were really willing to step up and fight for the rights of women in their lifetime. Then I think about my mother. And I remember the time when I was young and my mother took me, I, was a, a, I danced out with the city of Cleveland and we went to all kinds of public events. One of the places they took us was to a mental institution. It reminded me of that old movie, Snake Pit. It was all filled with women who were incarcerated. Many of them that were there because either their parents put them there if they acted a little bit too uppity. Uh, one of the women that I ran into there had dated someone of a different race, and so her parents had had her committed. My mother literally said, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get out of here because if I fight with your dad as I often do, he'll probably put me in here for good. Women were incarcerated and treated as mental patients if they stood up for themselves. It was that kind of an era. Even in my own life, you know, when I was in college and I was getting started with my life, uh, I landed one of my, my first good jobs and I wanted to be able to have my own credit card. I needed a credit card to be able to go out and do stories around the country and around the state. And I went to the bank to apply for a credit card and they said, oh no, sir, you can't get one. Your husband has to get one for you. You can't have a credit card in your own name if you were a woman until 1972, you couldn't establish your own credit. Awful things happen to women. I was unfortunately in my early years, in my first marriage, I kind of like voting in Chicago, marry early, marry often, right? Okay. <laughs> my first husband, when he discovered that he had terminal cancer, unfortunately his solution was to drink himself into oblivion, black out and beat me. And I knew what it was like to look into the eyes of somebody who might literally kill me. I knew what it was like to go to work and lie about the broken nose or the black eyes. Because if I was found to be a DV victim in that era, I would probably lose my job rather than be protected. There were no women's shelters. There were no protections for women. If the police came to the door, they were on his side, not yours. Having been through all of those things in my own life and realizing how hard women of my generation had to fight, the next thing I want us to do is to fight and get those women on campus to come join us. The next generation of women, yes. We need to expand the pool of women who are here because the issue for us is really going to be power. The example today is that we have, we need three things. We need to raise our voices and stop being the good girls who just take what we are given and we're gonna have to fight for whatever we're gonna get. We're gonna have to use our dollars to fight in the marketplace and only support those places that support us. Yeah! 
Let's make the advertisers for people like Rush Limbaugh, maybe the most famous misogynist in the United States. Let's rob him of those advertising dollars by telling those corporations that we are the women in the country who control that household budget in many, many cases, and we're going to be the ones who are not going to buy the products from corporations that support men like that. We're going to have a hell of a fight on our hands this November because there are rich, billionaires around who think that, for example, contraception in the case of Mr. Freeze is only the idea that women just need to put a Bayer aspirin between their knees as the right form of female contraception. We have this group of old white men who have billions of dollars they're willing to throw into this campaign. We're going to have to mobilize the women's vote like never before. We are the majority of people who vote in this society, and we're going to have to say we literally aren't going to take it anymore. It's time for us to fight back. I've watched the progress that we've made in this society, but I'm seeing us lose it. It is slipping away from us because not enough of us are here yet. Next time we come, and we better start coming every month down to the Capitol and making our voices known, each one of us needs to promise to bring 10 more women that aren't here today. Yeah. By the time the election rolls around this fall, I want to see a rally on the Capitol steps that says no more, especially in Michigan, no more. Thank you.